हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू पी डी एफ फॉर एग्जाम्स यूट्यूब चैनल ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज आई वॉज नॉट एबल टू अपलोड डे ट्वेल्व सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल भी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द कॉन्टेंट ऑफ डे ट्वेल्व दैट इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडीज एंड फ्यू नॉन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडीज विच आर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड रेलिवेंट फॉर यू एग्जामिनेशन सो इन दिस वीडियो स्टार्टिंग विद कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडी सो फर्स्ट लेट्स नो वॉट इज दिस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बॉडीज सो बाई द नेम इट सेल्फ इट इज क्लियर द बॉडी हु नेम हैज बीन मैंशन इन आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन under some article they are called as constitutional bodies and since they are constitutional bodies they derive the power directly from the constitution as we have seen in case of our judiciary the all courts they derive the power from constitution they were not answerable to any state or union legislature or executive because that body needs to be independent to perform the function properly as they had to give judgment or function sometime against the state also or against the government also that's why those bodies were independent and derive the power from constitution similar is the case with these constitutional bodies so the first constitutional body that we are going to discuss today is election commission so election commission that means a body which is responsible for conducting elections which elections so in previous videos we have seen that there were as we have federal type of government federal type of government means uh, we have government at each central which is called union government and we have government at state level also which are called at state government so for these two governments for central government and state government elections has to be conducted because without election how can we choose member of this parliament or member of this legislative assembly in parliament we had lok sabha and rajya sabha for both the houses the type of election or kind of election were different few were direct election and few were indirect election same is the case with state uh, government uh, there were mla election and whereas there were few mlc election member of legislative council and member of legislative assembly so why this body was needed and why it is an constitutional body and independent of uh, anything and which derives directly power from constitution because in our country to be a democratic since we know our country is a democratic country very free and fair election was required what do we mean by with this free and fair free you understand if your parents have uh, gone to cast vote i even you might have gone to cast vote sometime you have seen that you don't have to pay any charge for casting your vote you just have to go and click a button on whomever you want to select as your leader and your vote is casted or your vote is counted in that category and you didn't have to pay any fees for that and what is fair fair elections are very important because if election would be not fair the leaders will not be chosen by what we want so this has to be fair so for conducting free and fair election we needed a body for that very purpose election commission were formed so this election commission this is mentioned in article 324 so this article deals with the election commission its co uh, composition how it functions everything is mentioned in these article so we talk about the composition that means who are the member of this election Com election commission so there is a chief uh, election commissioner chief election commissioner that means a chairperson and there are other election commissioner and whose numbers are not fixed that means one chief election commissioner would be there apart from him or her there would be an additional election commissioner more than 1 2 3 that has to be decided by pres uh, president which is not mentioned in our constitution it's not mentioned number of these members are not mentioned in constitution that have to be decided by the president president will decide how many election commissioner required as per the requirement and why this election commissioner number of election commissioner has been increased earlier there were only one chief election commissioner this number has been increased because of the increasing in burden as you can see uh, the date of age of election has been reduced to 18 earlier it was 21 years old now it is 18 years old so we can see the increase in burden that's why more number of election commissioners were required for that very purpose we can see the composition and now what kind of election does it conduct election con election commission does not conduct every election it has got only four election to be conducted only four not more than that and what are those four those are parliament that means the member who are sitting in parliament are called member of parliament we know this very well so the people who are selected in mp or member of parliament they are elected through election commission the other are uh, state legislator so in state legislator also we have seen mla and mlcs so these are also elected and election commission organizes the election for electing these people next is president and the last is vice president so you just have to remember these four name you don't have to add any other category in this election because election commission organizes election only for parliament that is member of parliament 
member of state legislative and council president and vice president so this four category has to be remembered and what else and there may be other regional commissioner also appointed with consent of election commissioner for example uh, our country is very big country we know our area of our country is very huge and somewhere if uh, extra election commissioner are required so generally there are uh, one election commissioner which is head of this or chairperson of election commission there are other election commissioner but at regional center also or regional uh, level also if election commissioner are required they can be appointment with the consent of election commissioner officer or chief election commissioner now talking about uh, the removal how they can be removed so they can be removed only by the process of supreme court judge how the supreme court judges are removed similar process has to be used for removal of election commissioner they cannot be uh, you removed directly by parliament or like that they have to remove by the proper procedure as supreme court judges are removed and if we talk about members currently there are three members and salary and allowances are same as that of supreme court judge whatever salary and allowances the supreme court judge gets the same would be of that of commissioner and if we talk about the tenure tenure means how long this chief election or uh, election commissioner will work so they will work for maximum of 65 years or 6 years that means maximum tenure could be 6 years or 65 years whatever comes earlier what do we mean by this 6 or 65 so i'll tell you by an example if someone joins as election commissioner in 2000 let's say 16 and in if he has to retire today today is 2020 that means almost a four year gap so that person uh, and and that person is was of 62 years or let's say uh, 64 years of age when he joined in 2016 so he will retire when he will retire he will retire get retired in 2018 itself because his age is completed he is becoming 65 years in 2018 only that means he will serve as chief election commissioner all election commissioner only for 2 years but in case if he joins uh, at the age of 60 he can serve for 4 years or if he joins even if he joins in 2014 also he can Uh, serve till 2020 as 6 uh, years is the maximum tenure of an election commissioner that election commissioner might be any uh, the chief election commissioner or the other election commissioner their salaries allowances everything are equal it doesn't means that uh, someone is chief election commissioner and other are just election commissioner the salary and allowances won't vary they would be same as that of supreme court judge which we have already seen now powers and functions so uh, powers and function we have already discussed that they are responsible for conducting of elections and they are the person who decide the constituencies we have already seen that how elections were conducted in country or uh, sorry in, in national or state level several constituencies were divided in entire state if the election is of lok sabha or parliament so these territorial area would be decided by the election commission the role electoral role these are also made or uh, registered by election commission what is this electoral roll so if you remember if your parents have gone to cast a vote or if you have gone to cast a vote or if you have seen that uh, whenever you go to give your vote or cast a vote your name has to be there on that list if your name is not present on that list you won't be able to give your vote or choose the leader of your choice your name should be in your electoral roll for you to uh, give your vote or cast your vote and all the political rec uh, party recognition whatever political parties are there symbol giving symbols to them if you have gone to cast a vote you might have seen there are various symbol attached to every button that means the symbol belongs to some party for example we have lotus temple uh, lotus uh, which is symbol of bjp party we have hand symbol of a congress party so there are many parties like this and these symbols are decided and given by election commission only okay so this is all about election commission moving to next constitutional bodies that is upsc upsc is very well known to you you yourself are preparing for you ias examination ias or we'll say civil services examination ias is the highest post of civil services examination so this exam is conducted by a central recruiting agency that is union public service commission it not only conducts civil services examination apart from this it conducts many more examination like cds nd and there are many more examination which this uh, recruiting agency conduct at central level so article 315 to article 323 deals in part 14 of constitution deals with upsc its composition it's uh, whoever member that means whatever the members are there in upsc what are the recruitment method how they can be removed what are the tenure everything is uh, written in these articles so what is important in this uh, in upsc uh, upsc also there is almost similarity to that of election commission that means there is a chairperson or chair members and there are other members 
who are appointed a president that means if one chairperson or chief uh, chairman is appointed by president then other member of upsc would be appointed by president but with consent of chairman or whoever is the chairperson tenure is same as 65 to 6 years and uh, whatever comes earlier which i've already discussed in uh, last constitutional bodies and it is also considered as watch dot dog of merit list now watch it uh, what is this watch dog of merit list so whenever you have you apply for any examination you don't just uh, get ranks like that only your merits are being made as you know if you are appearing for upsc you will have to appear at three levels you have to give your prelims means and examination means and uh, interview exam marks are counted for creating merit so for example there are 1000 seats so top 1000 whoever has got top 1000 marks will be selected or will get a rank in civil service examination to be appointment as some officer so this merit system has to be maintained very importantly and that is done by union public service commission a recruiting body talking about the qualification uh, i forgot to tell qualification in that case of uh, Con that election commissioner over there also it is not mentioned in constitution about the qualification of member or election commissioner similarly it's not mentioned in constitution about the qualification of members of upsc or chairman but it's written that uh, the half of the member no quality no special qualification is required for half of the member whereas the other half see this is an commissions commission consists of more than one members so if there are 10 ex members let's take an example if there are 10 members so for five members any special kind of uh, qualification is not required whereas the other five members they will have to hold an government office either state government or central government they should be working in state government or central government minimum of 10 years then only they can be a member of union public service commission okay and uh, it is common for both states and center that means whenever requirement of any kind of uh, employment is required so upsc will be responsible for conducting the exam and it may help uh, state public service commission whenever required and chairman of the state public service commission is also appointed by governor not also see at uh, state level most of the appointment are done by governor but the removal in most of the cases is not with in the hands of governor removal is done by the president okay so this has to be uh, uh, noted everywhere we have seen this that the, although gov governor is the constitutional head of the state he may have power to appoint it's not necessary that he may always have the power to appoint but if he appoints he will rarely have the chance to remove the uh, person from his office it's the president on rights only when he can remove although governor consent can be taken so there are uh, anyone any person or any member of upsc can only be removed on certain uh, circumstances not in every circumstances they can be removed so those uh, can be if some person or any member goes bankrupt or engages during uh, during his office term if he's working as chairman or a uh, chairperson or member of upsc he doesn't he should not get employed outside his office or outside he should not hold any office and in and in opinion of president if president th uh, and in opinion of president if president thinks that that person is not able to perform his duty properly then also that person is removed from his position now what are the function of upsc so this we have already seen that upsc is an central recruiting body and its uh, use or this commission or this body used for recruiting service civil servants are uh, employed for central government and it may give suggestion or help in appointment of uh, services in case of state also whenever they, it is asked it act as an advisory body for executive or legislative body whenever required so whatever rules are made for example an notification is out for appointment of CSA civil servant aspirant only we are taking example of your exam only so if a notification come out so in, in notification everything is mentioned like uh, what should be the qualification what should be the minimum age everything about the qualification fees steps of the examination so these are decided by parliament not by the uh, any body this body can give recommendation by their recommendation parliament decide these things promotion how the people will be promotion what are the issues method of recruitment promotion transfer principal suitability reimbursement like uh, if any civil servant is in office and during his office tenure he is uh, defending any legal case against him so would that legal defending case or uh, money for that would be given by government or not so these kind of recommendation or suggestion are taken from upsc and upsc suggestion are not mandatory at all they are considered advisory if upsc wants they will take the suggestion if upsc doesn't want no need 
next uh, constitutional body is uh, joint state public service commission so this joint state public service commission by the name itself it is clear that if recruitment is required uh, in more than one state and those states are not able to form their own state public service commission in this case constitution has a provision to form joint state public service commission in this state uh, one or two more than two states are combined and they can use this bod body to recruit their civil services in that state chairman and members are appointed by president again and over here only one thing differ that is age in other cases till now we have seen in upsc and election commission the minimum age was 65 not minimum maximum age was 65 but here it is 62 years age or 6 years the tenure should be 6 years or 62 years whatever comes first so you might have heard uh, understood about this whatever comes first and talking about the removal they can be suspended or removed by the president on certain grounds not like that only not president if president won uh, just by wanting president can't remove anyone there should be certain grounds for removal of any members okay next is uh, national commission for sc so this is also in constitutional bodies uh, this commission is made for scs that means anything related to scheduled caste in the country whatever problem they face whatever issue they have these are to be uh, mentioned or handled by this national commission for scs so earlier at the beginning this uh, was not a separate body earlier under article 338 there were two bodies national commission for scs and st these were combined body but after 89th constitution amendment act 2003 these had been divided into two parts national commission for scs uh, national commission for scs and the other body is national commission for sts two different part are divided this comes under article 338 whereas the other comes under article 338a now uh, talking about the members it consists of a chairperson vice chairperson and three other members this composition it will be same in case of national commission for scs and the function we have already uh, seen what are the function any issues whatever issues are related to sc and scs these will be handled by this body and whatever the grievances they have whatever the problems they have uh, they will come like any land dispute or any problem uh, these uh, SC will face they have to come to this body same with uh, national commission for STs as I've already told it, it was uh, divided in two parts in 2003 uh, amendment act and this comes under article 338 and it deals with scheduled tribes whatever issues faced by scheduled tribes it comes to national commission for SCs uh, sorry STs and again the composition is same chairperson a vice chairperson and other three members appointment done by president removal and tenure are also decided by president function are almost same as that of SCs only we have to remove SC to ST that's it about national commission of STs now moving to the other body finance commission so money money plays very important role everywhere because if you have to run a house then also you need a money Similar is the case with country. If you, have run, if you have to run a big country, money is very important. And we know we have federal form of government. Again, federal form means that there would be several governments uh, at state level as well as one main government at central level. Now, monies are collected, revenue are collected, tax are collected through state also as well as center also. Although at present we have a common tax, GST, goods and services tax, but still the collections are done by states and central. So how these money would be allocated for use? So we, have, we can see there are several kinds of schemes which comes again and again. So these schemes, uh, these schemes needs to use money. So from where these money will come? Money from where we know. But how this money would be allocated to state, uh, center and state, this has to be decided by a body that is called Finance Commission. If we talk about tenure, five years, that means president forms this Finance Commission five years, whenever a Lok Sabha new government is formed at that time finance commission is made and after that uh, the tenure of that Lok Sabha moves or dissolve a new finance commission is made this also consists of chief member or chief this also consists of chief member of finance commission and other four members and other four members are special appointment those appointment of those members are done in special provisions what are those the one member would be from high court judge or one qualified to be appointment as high court judge that means anyone who has already f uh, worked as high court judge or who has equivalent qualification as that of an high court judge so he can be a member of finance commission other is a person having knowledge of finance and accounts so this deals with money so this has to be very important other is experience in financial matter and last is special knowledge of economies now any a person with special knowledge of economies is required so that what should be the prediction or what should be the behavior of this economy these are uh, should be known by a economist 
Next is functions. Functions we have already seen. Allocation of money to state and center from Consolidate Fund of India. And what is this Consolidate Fund? Consolidate Fund, we have Consolidate Fund at state level also as well as as a central level also. So these Consolidate Fund are nothing but the collection of the revenue or taxes from citizens. So, and uh, these money are to be allocated at center of state as well as to panchayat municipalities. Sometimes uh, the government, these panchayats are or the municipalities are the local government or the third tier of the government. They also need money to function. So, sometimes the few schemes come from central governments and few schemes come from state government. So, allocation of funds from these both to these uh, local government are to be done by finance commission only. Okay. Our next important office is Attorney General of India. So Attorney General of India is the first law officer of Government of India. He is the first law officer. And his position is uh, given by President. That means a President appoints the Attorney General of India and he can hold his office during the pleasure of the President. That means if President wants, he can remove Attorney General at any time. But again, there should be certain condition and what is the qualification of an attorney general of india so that person should be qualified to be appointment as supreme court judge then only he can be attorney general of india this body is very important this office is very important as we know first law officer like first citizen of india is president he holds a very prominent important name so is the case with attorney general of india also talking about the function and responsibilities so attorney general of india function uh, functions as an advisor to presidents as we know the law making process in india whenever any bills in, a bill is introduced in any of the house either raj sabha lok sabha after passing through both the houses it finally goes to president for final assent so if president needs any uh, suggestion regarding it with uh, whether it is uh, equivalent to uh, constitution terms and condition or not these kind of suggestions are given by attorney general of india to the president next is he is he represents union and state before the court and is al allowed to take a private practice that means wherever the hearing are done throughout the country in any court this attorney general of india can go and listen to the cases he has complete right and he can allow he can pr privately practice in any court he want but the opposite party should not be state why opposite party should not be state because this person is already working for government in favor of government should not go he should not fight any case against state or government okay next is special officer for linguistic mon uh, minorities now in our country we have various kind of minorities uh, on several parameters so on base of language we have few minorities so they don't lose their culture their language they do not come vanish like we have seen in tribal areas they have their own culture they have their own provision to live so they don't get diminished or extinct for that very purpose special officer for linguistic minority was required and uh, this was done in 7th constitutional amendment act 1956 a new article was inserted article 350b uh, in part 17th of constitution which tells or explains about the officer of for linguistic minorities what would be the function again the function would be same as that of the sc and st committee they will take care of linguistic minority committees last is uh, last constitutional body is national commission for backward classes so this body is very much similar to uh, this National Commission for SCs and STs. The only difference over here is that the grievances, whatever grievances uh, these OBC category have, they are not allowed to be resolved in this commission. Till now, that body has not been developed, so they are still vested in National Commission for Scheduled Caste. As we know, uh, in 2018, uh, Constitution Amendment was done. Constitution Amendment 123rd, in which special uh, rights or special reservation were given to backward class and that to economically backward class we have seen this now even obc also have reservation at certain position of government if they are economically backwards so this body take care of those kind of cases now coming to the second part of today's video that is non-constitutional bodies now as discussed what are non-constitutional bodies so these body would not be mentioned in the article but still they will be body which will be responsible for functioning of government so the very first important body that we have to discuss is Niti Aayog. So Niti Aayog always, it is always in news. What is this Niti Aayog? It is, or its full form is National Institution for Transforming India and it works as policy think tank. Now by the name itself it is clear, whatever the policy are to be made, how they are to be implemented throughout the country, what would be the finance or anything that has to deal with policy, it will be discussed under Niti Aayog. And how this Niti Aayog was formed? The Niti Aayog was formed 
by Union Cabinet Resolution on January 2015. So, in 2015, this body has been formed. What would be the aims and function of Niti Aayog? So, aims and function. Function are very common. As I've already told, anything related to policy will be dealt in Niti Aayog. And the very important function which Niti Aayog plays is uh, coordination. As we know, we have federal government. I'm telling again and again, so keep this in mind. Our country has got federal government, union at state, and there are a few policies which are made by state government and are to be implemented in states and UTs or union territories. So implementing any policy in state or union territories which have their own government or own legislator, own executive, a proper coordination is required. So for coordinating or for coordination of this state and curve center, Niti Ayo is responsible and it helps in coordination. So, if we see uh, the main functioning of Niti Aayog, it can be categorized under four heads that is to act as resource central knowledge hub, design policy programming framework, cooperative federalism, monitoring and evaluation. So, we have seen this. Last is uh, composition of Niti Aayog and this composition means who are members in Niti Aayog. So, uh, Niti Aayog is headed by our Prime Minister, whoever the Prime Minister would be, they will be considered as chairperson. Governing council, now council as we know is member, team members, more than one, two members are there, one or two members are there. So they are chief minister and administrator of union territories. As we have seen that uh, cooperative or coordination is to be done over here. So chief minister who are head of their states and administrator who are head of union territories are to be there in this council. Regional council, so it's not required, it is always there. Whenever it is required, any regional council is required, they are meant as per requirement and head would be chief minister and or administrator of union territory in that particular region vice chairperson is appointed by president and apart from there are many more members next is national human right commission you have already uh, heard about this in newspaper televisions whenever something happened to any minority or anything this national human right commission comes into act now this consists of a chairperson or a chairman four member and the chairman, whoever has to be chairman of this uh, National Human Rights Commission, he should be a retired just chief, uh, chief justice of India, chief justice where we have, they are the in Supreme Court. So the head or the chairman of National Human Rights should be chief retired chief justice of India and the other four members. There are four more members. So two members would be the uh, working or retired chief justice of India or judges of high court. And the other two members would have special training or special experience in human rights. They are the members of National Human Rights Commission and functioning we know because we have already heard them in news. So I'm not going through this and moving to the next important non constitutional body is Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI. We've already seen many serials are made on CBI, in many movies you have seen uh, CBI investigations required when police is not able to perform their duties. So this is an investigating body to reduce the corruption. In our country, there are many kind of corruption. So this was not actually built in 1963. Over here it is given Central Bureau of Investigation was set up in 1963 by the re resolution of Ministry of Home Affairs actually started in 1941 uh, as Delhi Special Police Establishment and it was renamed in 1963 as CBI or Central Bureau of Investigation. And the problem with uh, CBI is that it is multi-answerable. It has to answer at multiple level. That is DOPT, Department of Personal and Training, Ministry of Home Affairs, Law and Justice. So since it, is, uh, it has got issue of multi-answerability and it is somewhat under central government, so a proper fair investigation could not be done. So whenever there is a CBI inquiry and the ruling government most of the time we have seen the results are almost negligible but apart from investigation it has got many other works like uh, coordinating the Lokpal, Lokayukt and Central Vigilance Commission. So this is all about the CBI moving to the next and last constitutional body that is Central Vigilance Commission. So Central Vigilance Commission was set up by government in February 1964 on whose recommendation Sri K. Santhanam. Uh, important point to be learned in this commission is that it is apex vigilation institution of a country. So you don't have to get confused over here as we have apex judiciary body. What is our apex judiciary body? That is Supreme Court, the topmost court. Similarly, uh, the apex vigilance institution is Central Vigilance Commission, not the CBI. Don't get confused over here. This point has to be mentioned from here. So this is all about today's video. I hope you have understood about constitutional and non-constitutional bodies. 
if you have any issues any queries regarding this you can always ask in the comment box and as i've already told yesterday also today also i'm telling uh, we have done day uh, till day 13 we have done in 14 and 15 we don't have much important topic there are some topics like citizen charter so citizen charter we know any information about uh, for example if you go to a bank and uh, there are several citizen charter in, uh, in the bank which tells you about your rights what should be done in the bank so those are citizen charter and one more point that is important is anti-defection law so according to this law uh, we have seen the election how they are conducted so if any MP or MLA if they are standing from one party for example let's take two important or major party for country at now at present we have BJP and Congress so if anyone uh, is fighting or electing from BJP party and after winning in Parliament or in Lok Sabha he wants to switch to Congress so in that case this person would be not consider as the winning elected or willing candidate of parliament or not the member of parliament so this is called anti-defection law so that's about the polity if you have any questions regarding polity till now you can always ask in the comment box from tomorrow we'll be starting geography so see you next video thank you for watching till then goodbye